Now as I rotate that drum, I can check to make sure that they don't move relative to each other. And there's my two, my two notches exposed there. I've got two runs of cord here. What I have to achieve is to lift out the bottom run of cord here, the one closer to the bottom of the camera. I have to lift that up over the top of the other one, out of the way. And then the top one I've got to get looped down through those notches. And then bring my cord back down again into place. And that way the cord will be locked into that drum. And it's a little bit fraught. Uh, it's a lot of poking around with needles and pointed tweezers and toothpicks and God knows what else. And at all times you have to avoid displacing the meter, which is always keen to get away if it possibly can. As soon as this pops loose on the top of the camera, the cord tension's lost. You can be sure that that cord will take the opportunity to jump off a pulley somewhere and you're going to have the front off the camera again in order to straighten everything up. So let me find my gear and get to this nasty, t nasty task. I'll start with a uh, couple of dress makers pins here, see if I can get this bottom loop up in the air where I can Shift it. Yeah, this cord unfortunately is probably tighter than it should be. That's it. That's it. So I've got that up out of the way there. And now this one here, I need to get down through that loop. It's fair to say it doesn't want to go. Whoops, just about red, just about there. One side's in. The other side's in. I'm just going to get this loop back over where it belongs. I think that's it. That is it. Okay, so I've got that all back where it belongs. That's the meter dealt with. So I can do some closing up here now, I think. We have two nickel plated screws here. Check. 
check that everything is done up tight. I advance my film advance lever about half a turn to bring this back out of the way. I should be able to put my finder assembly in place. So here's the finder assembly that I've so carefully reassembled and got back in a good state. And I can put the screws in there that'll hold that in place. And these screws are just a bit got a bit too much sticky tape on them from where they were forced through the sticky tape. I'm just cleaning that off the threads. That looks good. So one here. One opposite over here. I just thought my tweezers were magnetised, but it's just the, the adhesive from that tape on that screw doing that. Get those down in place, do them up tight. And we have one at the back here through this base of that mask. Which is this one, which is not in particularly pretty condition. But as I recall, one of them was a bit rough when we started. That's that. Okay. I want to wipe the top of my meter dial there lightly. The, the window rather than not the dial. Just to lift off any dust. That is ready to have the top cover put in place. We have a spring here. Our meter setting button. And where's our top cover? Here's the top cover. Having a look at that. That appears to be quite good. I'll give that a quick clean with a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud and then we'll be able to fit this to the camera. I noticed a problem with the top cover. The frame counter is quite gooey. The grease here is very thick, very dried out and sticky. And that's going to have to come out because otherwise the frame counter mechanism is just too stiff. Now if the frame counter mechanism is stiff in these cameras it means that the load on the shutter cocking rack would be very high because the shutter cocking rack has to move that frame counter each with each advance of the film advance. So it's worth taking some time to make sure that the frame counter is not unusually stiff. In this case Swabbing this with a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud should remove that sticky grease and very likely there'll be no further problem. I'll get that done. Well that went very smoothly. That's all cleaned up and ready to go. Fit my top cover back in place. screws in there and I'll just run down this screw and the rewind knob can go on there if I could just figure out what I've done with it all oh, here it is 
Okay, so here's our rewind knob waiting to be reassembled. So we've got our wavy washer that uh, provides the controlled friction for the film reminder type dial pointer. Pop that in there. Here's the screw that goes in there. Run that in. And find the appropriate driver for that. which is this tool I made many years ago. Tighten that up, that's good to go. That goes on the top. Just run that down, something through the fork to stop the shaft turning. Do that up with my fingers. That's that. So, we have a good working camera, everything nice and snappy, good clean finder, but I haven't finished yet. At the base of the camera I want to put my chrome trim plate back on. So I've got the shutter cocked there. I'm going to set my frame counter to number one to lock everything in place. So that my film advance doesn't move while I'm push, putting pieces back in place. A problem that you can strike with this model is if you remove the base plate and the film advance is not locked by getting the, the lock in place, getting it on frame number one. This can back up just enough to disengage the cocking rack at the top of the camera. And of course if it disengages the cocking rack at the top of the camera, then at the very best case the timing's lost, but much more likely it won't pick up the cocking rack when you advance the film and so you're going to have to open the camera up and get everything back in place and that can be very tedious but by making sure the frame counter is on number one this is locked can't fall out of engagement and I can get this base plate back in place, put the film advance lever on there and carry on with one or two other things that need to be checked. Now we know that our lens mount to film plane distance is correct. What I've got to check now is to make sure that the lens focuses correctly at the film plane, in other words that the lens is correctly adjusted. And assuming that the lens is correctly adjusted, I've then got to check to make sure that the image on the screen appears to be correct matches the image at the film plane. And then assuming that that's correct, we're all good to go. The leatherette can go back on the base of the camera, but not before because the adjustment for the mirror position is right here. I may not need to touch that. Well, my image at the film plane is good. The image at the screen is not quite right. Um, so I've got to make an adjustment here. Basically I'm moving the 
Mirror. And basically I need to decrease the light path there. Because the images don't come together at when the lens is at infinity, the um, image is not correct. So I've got a lock screw here, which hopefully I can get to. Yep, that's moved, and my main adjustment screw is here. So I'll try shifting that slightly. And check again. That was all that was wanted. It was just a very slight adjustment of that mirror position. Just checking that my lock screw is nice and tight. And now I can glue the leatherette onto the base of the camera. So I'll do the same as previously, I'll put that frame count around on the number one. I don't think I can get into much trouble now because the cover will be on the camera. We're at frame number one, we should be good. Right, so I've just got to take my film advance lever off here and glue my leather it back on the base. All right, some adhesive. These leatherettes were cleaned up earlier to remove any traces of uh, grease or lumps of old adhesive or anything else off them. You just want a nice thin even layer of adhesive and that's probably a little bit light there so let's put some more on here and spread that about. important to get the coverage right to the edges because leatherettes peel from the edges nothing ever peels from the middle the edges have got to be well stuck down that should do Now these leatherettes usually shrink to some extent so they don't want to fit neatly around a raised boss like this or around that rewind button boss. So make sure that you push the leatherette firmly around those bosses otherwise it'll sit there like a little cone shaped uh, bump and it won't look right. Our film advance lever can go back on. And this camera did have its leatherette patch, that's good. It's not uncommon for retinas to arrive without the leatherette patch on the film advance lever because Often people have had it off for one reason or another and failed to put it back on because they didn't have any adhesive that they felt was suitable and somehow never got around to it.
probably also worth saying that uh, sometimes there's no leatherette on the film advance lever because somebody made a cack-handed job of removing it in the first place and ended up tearing it to pieces and so it wasn't fit for putting back okay well that's good now I can put the I can see something here I'm going to just backtrack here I think I've missed something I should have shouldn't have missed let's get this off I can see two patches that should have sat on the base plate of the camera and that I probably missed putting back there. Yes. Prop this up here and here. Two little cover patches. Now those cover patches' job is to stop the leatherette from dimpling in at those two positions. And generally, they stay stuck to the body quite nicely. And don't get disturbed but today they didn't I'll just give this leatherette another wipe over with adhesive lightly and we'll put it back where it came from And it'll be like it never happened. Get that leather it's seated. I must be rushing instead of uh, taking my time to miss that the first time round. Still, no harm done. We'll get there in the end. I'm down to the last few pieces here, you see. That's how I was able to spot those two escapes. The back catch release cover. Always entertain them to get in place because the spring is enthusiastic to get displaced and if it gets displaced it can get trapped underneath and if it gets trapped underneath it won't work right and what's worse is it gets it's likely to get damaged if it gets damaged it's not going to work right even after you put it in the right place. So it's 
worth taking your time getting that spring seated. If you have any reason to think that it got displaced while you were lifting it into place, stop, don't proceed, keep, go back, take it off, check and have another go. As it uh, costs nothing to have another go except a little bit of time. And that's infinitely more preferable to uh, making a mess of something that you're going to have to find parts for. Right, leatherettes for the front of the camera. Well, I've got those here. And they are cleaned and ready to put back. Right. Let's do this side first. That's a fairly generous amount of adhesive. I'll probably end up removing half of that. Let's see how we go. As usual, it's important to get coverage right to the edges. And corners, of course, are doubly bad. going to peel anywhere, it's going to come off at a corner. Right, now I'm checking that I haven't got too much adhesive in any one spot. I don't want it running around liquid on the surface. Getting it over that flash boss there is the first task and getting it on square on the camera is the next task. Getting that little sharp point of leatherette tucked in neatly against the body and making sure that it's even between the chrome. Tucked up against the hinge line at that end this adhesive is a uh, rubbery adhesive that before it cures it will rub away quite nicely with your fingers. Um, failing that, a little bit of naphtha on a cotton bud will shift it if it's tried a bit more than that. If it's already cured or partly cured. Just want to make sure this leatherette is tucked right down in there. That's good. Well that leatherette looks nice and neat. And I'll get its brother on and we'll be in business. Alright, I've got my leatherette there. I'm going to get that little pointy bit tucked into the corner nicely down here. That's the trickiest bit with this. And rolled in, we've got to open the door. Because this has to tuck down against that line of the body there. As before, make sure it's even between the top and bottom chrome trims. And I've got a bit of an adhesive there on that, that body edge. I'll just give that 
take a bit of naphtha, dampen a cotton bud, just run it along that chrome trim to take that off. And that is pretty much it for this camera. Or at least that's the camera body. Because I haven't serviced the lens yet. And the lens is the uh, standard Retina Zener 50mm f2.8, commonly seen on these cameras. You also see on these cameras quite commonly is the 50mm f1.9 Xenon. Uh, that's a, a bigger and more impressive looking lens, but uh, you'd be hard pressed to say that it produces better results. I'm sure it was more expensive. So, the lens. I have to service that. So I'll put my body to one side. I think I'm done with that. Probably just as well, because, by oh, geez, it's taken a bit of extra time. 